Alright, so management section 72. The tasks associated with identifying and selecting competent is the same as good, good employees. Okay? So first step is let's see if they have phases. Phase one is employment planning. So what is employment planning? It is a process where managers evaluate what current workers they have. So what you have today, what you need tomorrow, and the difference. So, the university now will determine if they need more professors for next semester and next semester. They will see how many students they have. They will see how many professors they need. Okay? They see how many they have. If they need more, they will begin searching for more. Okay? Same thing with the restaurant. If you have 12 tables, for 12 tables, maybe you need two waitresses, okay? One, maybe not enough, okay? So, you will have to identify if you have a big hotel with 50 rooms, maybe only one or two ladies cleaning the rooms, not enough, maybe you need five, okay? Who will be cleaning the rooms? So, number one, you need to do planning, okay? And the planning means you need to identify future needs and you need to know your current available resources. So, basically, what you get is called an HRM plan, Human Resource Plan. It's simply how many people you need to hire, but also which people you don't need. You say, oh, we don't need anymore this person, or we don't need so many waiters, okay? Or, oh, we need more cooks and we need less waitresses, okay? You need to find out what you need more and what you need less. The next step, which is part actually of this one here, is you make it's called inventory, human resource inventory. And human resource inventory simply means a list of all the employees with their skills. Okay? So, who works for you and what they can do. Alright? So, as part of the inventory here, I can teach economics, I can teach money and banking, I can teach finance, I can teach accounting, if I have to, I teach management. So you get all the skills that you have currently. So you get all the people with their skills. It's called the human uh, resource inventory. And it lists the name, let's see, education, training, Previous employment, we call it experience, languages, especially important for hotel, for restaurant business, okay? Capabilities, specializations, and other important skills about work. So this is called the human resource inventory, the people you have. Now, completely different step is called job analysis. And in a job analysis, you analyze the particular job and you provide for that job. It's called the job description. So, in a job analysis, you analyze the process of the job, what the employee 
must do and based on what they have to do you provide the job description some job descriptions are easy one of the easiest job description is a waitress just because everybody knows what a waitress does and you see every day everywhere okay so you don't need too much of a waitress okay now for professor you don't need a job description we know what we're supposed to do we're supposed to teach you we're supposed to make exercises we're supposed to make exams midterms we have a fairly good idea what we have to do so when i come here i don't get job description okay when they hire me i don't need a job description okay i know everything about my job okay similar with receptionist receptionist in a hotel yes you can just you can just tell what the job description is usually you will provide for an employee it, it's called the job requirements or the job duties we also call them job responsibilities so if you're at reception you tell you're responsible for this for this for this for this for this for these things you call it's called the bellboy you call it here bellboy right bellboy so you call the bellboy for this and this you call security okay so if this is a problem not your job call security okay security will take care of it okay so you have job analysis where you look at what you need next step is job description and the job description is the kind of skills that you need and the last step is job responsibilities you hire you have to do this 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 and this okay what you have to do all right sometimes besides job description you have the next one which is called job specification and job specification is the minimum amount of skills what you need is a minimum okay so these are the minimum qualifications and skills that a person must have in order to get a job example here in the university the minimum requirement is master's degree you want to teach at the university you have to have a minimum of master's degree now most professors will have doctorate degree okay but you don't have to have it here okay some other university will say must have doctorate no doctorate no job okay teaching okay so for a waitress what you need is usually two hands right and being able to walk obviously oh, and maybe being able to talk obviously I mean, it's a little tricky to get a waitress she can't speak she's mute okay cannot speak difficult also a waitress must be able to hear all right you can't just hire a waitress that cannot hear right the customer want to save the order she cannot hear okay so this is called job specification all right as I said, part of the planning is you determine future needs. What is the future need? How many receptionists you need? How many waitresses you need? The university, how many professors you need? Okay, for all of this, you determine your future needs. Okay. The difference is called staffing you have too many people and not enough work you call overstaffing so overstaffing means too many workers not very not much work okay i gave you an example over here in patong you know when i go to the massage parlors they are overstaffed okay they are 
12 girls waiting in there and work maybe for two, maybe for one, okay? Sometimes for three. So, out of 12, maybe five, maybe six, maybe eight, they don't need, okay? That's called overstaffing. The opposite, where you have too much work and not enough workers, you called understaffing. Okay, so understaffing. Very often happens in restaurants, in busy restaurants, at busy times. Uh, for example, I see when I go, let's say, Big C, the cash register, in the evening, peak time, 8 o'clock at night, and half the register closed, the cash register closed. And at the same time, you have long lines of customers, okay? Long lines of customers, customers have to wait. You have cash register, you don't have cashier. So, it's a bad planning, okay? What maybe they need is people coming extra work from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the evening, okay? Now, who would be a good worker for this kind of half-time job? Who would be a good worker for half-time job? Well, maybe an old lady, 60 years old, or maybe a young mother with a baby. She don't want to work full time, but she would like to work half time, okay? And she'd be good to work from 6 o'clock till 10 o'clock. And if there's any problem with the baby, her husband can take care of the baby, okay? So, that's called understaffing and overstaffing. Let's see what we have. And then you get, it's called recruitment. And the recruitment is the process of hiring an employee. That's it. Recruitment. A process, there it is here. Recruitment. A process of hiring someone and bringing in to do a job, to work. Okay? Meaning, getting a worker to work. The opposite of recruitment is called downsizing. And in downsizing is reducing the number of workers. Basically, you see which worker you don't need or which worker you don't want. Okay? If you don't want them, you say goodbye. Okay? You say, we don't need your services or we don't like your services and you'll have to go. And maybe they go today or maybe you give them warning, say one month. You have one month left to finish the job. Okay? For me, I got a fixed contract up until September 30. Okay? So in August they will tell me whether they will renew the contract or it's called terminate the contract okay now they can terminate in the middle only there's a big problem what kind of big problem i come really drunk to class right half naked all right that will be cause for it's called immediate termination the word in english terminate as meaning number one to reach the end. Meaning number two, to kill. You watch the movie with Schwarzenegger, The Terminator, right? Right, you have. And here, for work, for job, to terminate means to end the job. To terminate means you send somebody home because they don't longer work. That's Termination, okay? So, downsizing means reducing the number of people and you choose which ones you don't need and which ones you want to terminate. Okay. So, recruitment, recruitment, okay. Uh, there should be something about here, employee. Yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. Okay, recruitment. PowerPoint really bad. Ending layoffs. Not good. Recruiting 
Okay, let's do this. Recruiting sources. Okay, this is the graph of what you currently have available and these are your needs, okay? And this difference is what you have, what you need is called understaffing and this represents your new recruit, okay? So, this is how you determine future employee needs. What you need, what you have, and how much you have to hire. Okay, let's do this. Recruitment. How you recruit. Here, with camera, you'll have to begin zooming step by step. You just zoom in a little bit so we can read and you have to move the camera a little bit. So, you have different sources. Which are the most common sources? Number one, internal search. Internal search is very simple. You already look for someone in the job. Someone who is already working for you and you take them from one position, you put them for another position. Most common example is, for example, you have reception desk. You may have, let's say, five people. The chief for the reception leaves. You need to find someone to take the chief position at the reception, okay? Maybe you hire a new receptionist. Same thing for a professor. They may need a finance professor. And instead of hiring a professor in finance, they can give me the course to teach finance because I've been teaching finance for about 10 years, okay? So, this is called internal search. You already use people which are internally, okay? And it's sometimes very important when you have a higher position, for example, they need the department chair, okay? So when you need the boss, instead of hiring someone from outside, is to bring someone from inside and raise their position, okay? So that's usually one way, internal search. Very good because it's low cost. You already know the person. They already know. We know you. We know everything. You build employee. This word morale means the people's desire and willingness to work. Their attitude for the job, for the profession, for the employer. Okay. And the candidates are very familiar with the organization. The problem is that you have a very limited supply, all right? So you got a hotel, you got only four people, five people working at the reception desk, okay? Not a big choice, all right? Maybe you have to go outside. So another source is advertisement or advertising, where you put an ad in the newspaper, you put an ad on the radio, you put an ad on the internet, okay? So, in economics, we got a special website, it's called Job Openings for Economists. And everyone in the world, Japan, Korea, Germany, Finland, US, UK, uh, China, they're all advertising for highly skilled Okay, so you just use advertisement. So if you're a doctor, you go here for doctor jobs. If you're an economist, you go here for economics jobs. Well, if you're a waitress, you go, I don't know where you go if you're a waitress for a job, okay? So advertising is the second common way. So number three is employee referral. Employee referral means you know somebody who could be good for the job. So someone inside is good for the job. So I have partially an employee referral. Uh, the other professor in finance, he knew me before. He said, oh, we can get this guy, we can bring him here, and he can teach accounting, okay? I know debit, credit, right? Uh, assets, liabilities 
capital equity and all the accounting staff for easy to teach. Okay? So that's an employee referral. Someone inside knows there is a need for a job, say, oh yeah, I know that person is looking for a job and is good for the job. That's number three. Number four is public employment agencies. They like them a lot in Europe. They got big employment agencies in Germany, right? We got big employment agencies in Bulgaria. Now, in Europe, we got a system, it's called EURES, and I know because one of my good friends is working there, where when they need a job in Italy, they advertise in Italy, and then they advertise in the EURES system. The Euro system means if they need a job in Italy, they advertise to Bulgaria, Romania, Czechoslovakia, and all the other 25 or 27 European countries, okay? And we regularly have Bulgarian people say, oh, I'm looking for a job in Austria, or I'm looking for a job in Finland. Somebody would like to go to Finland, all right? So they look at, oh, there's a job posting for a waitress in Finland, okay, or for whatever, hotel receptionist in Finland. And they know maybe two or three languages, they want to go there, okay? So that's a public employment agency. And we have in Bulgaria many people who can go every week and say, well, do you guys have a job for France or Germany or whatever they want to do, okay? Or do you have jobs for carpenters, okay? So that's a public employee agency. Uh, if you're an employer, very easy to find an employee. Say, well, I need to the government. You just send them an email or just say, I need this and this. And you will get hundreds, sometimes thousands of applicants eager to get the job, okay? Because it's a national. So that's number, what is it? Three, number four, private employment agencies, okay? Uh, I recently got an email from somewhere in Myanmar saying, we are a pri private employment agency in Myanmar. Uh, we'd like to know what your skills and qualifications are. Our job is to match you with employers in Myanmar. Uh, we will contact them and we already have a list of maybe 500 employers. When we receive your resume and we have your skills, we will see who might be appropriate and we may possibly find a job for you. If we find a job for you, then you don't have to pay us anything. The payment is made entirely by the employer, okay? So that's called a private employment agency, okay? So we go to the private employment agency. Very, very, when I was working in Macau, you had so many private employment agencies in Macau. We're just a little office and all they got to do is employers go there and say, hey, I'd like to get a, an employee for, let's say, cleaning the house. It's called a housemaid. Or we're looking for a waitress, okay? They go to this uh, private employment agency and say, we're looking for a waitress. It's this restaurant, works so many days, so many hours a week. That's the kind of salary. These are the benefits. We're looking for a girl between the age of 20 and 35. I don't know, whatever the job description and the job requirement is, okay? And usually foreigners, like Filipinas, Indonesian girls, Malaysian girls, they go to the office and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. I want to work this and this. And they say, yes, we have or no, we don't have, okay? So it's very simple, private employment agencies. Here in Thailand, you have private private employment agencies? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So, school placement, very common. When I worked in the United States, sorry, studied in the United States at the Ohio State University, that was 1995 to 1999, you have what's called school placement, and you can you have 
or in a school placement, it may be. And let's also do something else. School fair, job fair. Let's explain job fair. Job fair is when the university organizes for all employers that would like to hire new people, okay? They will open, it's called a fair, and all employers come to the university, they open a little booth and, we, and they say, we want to hire these kind of people. So, when I was in the United States, they had a big, big, big job fair at the university. They use like the stadium, or it's actually the basketball court. It had maybe 100 employers, they all come and say, we want to hire graduates. Graduates graduate in June, and they come in April or May, and want last year students to hire. You have job fairs here like this? Yes. Now, when I was teaching in May, of last May in, in Macau, okay, and school year finished in June, during my teaching in May, they had a job fair. It had so many banks and other employers come to the university advertising, trying to find workers and employees, okay? So, that's one way with a job fair from, from school. Another way is the school, the university can make arrangements. And the university says, we have seven jobs for, which was the hotel? Hilton, the hotel? Yes. Hilton Hotel, right? So they say, we have seven jobs for Hilton Hotel, for receptionist. We have five jobs for room maids. We have this, we have that, okay? And then they come to university, university maybe place some of the good students. And they say, okay, you can start at Hilton Hotel reception three months. And if they like you, you keep the job. If they don't like you, they say, sorry, finish, right? So that's school placement. Sometimes you have what's called temporary help services. In a temporary help service, they offer only temporary job. For example, you need to clean your garden and you have a lot of things and you want to hire somebody for one day, okay? You go to the temporary help service and say, look, I need somebody for one day to do this type of work, okay, cleaning uh, the basement or cleaning the garage or whatever the job is, okay? And you hire them. Uh, you're a mice company, you have a event, I don't know, wedding or some other experience, and it's big. You have only 10 waitresses, but now you need 15, okay? If you need 15, you can go to the temporary help service and say, we need five waitresses temporary, only for the weekend, okay? Only for the conference. When the conference finished, we don't need them anymore, okay? So that's temporary help, all right? You also have employee leasing and independent contractors. That's another one I'm not going to discuss. So, all of these are different ways to hire people. Very important. In many ways, hiring is one of the most important jobs. Now, here, you only try to, and here's the keyword, you only find them. You only find them. After you find the match, you have to select them. Let's see if we have selections or what we got. Handling layoffs. Is it this? Yes. So, handling layoffs is the same as downsizing. And this one is very, very confusing. Okay, so you have to try to understand there are very many ways. I got here, they got here seven different ways, and each has a different meaning. So, the word to fire means that it's permanent, and it's involuntary. Fire, you just fire the person, okay? The person gets fired. It is permanent, and it is involuntary, okay? Involuntary means you don't want it, okay? You have to say you gotta go. 
and they don't come back. And here's the difference. A lot of times they like to use the word layoff. But layoff means, means temporary. In a layoff, they say, we don't need your service now, but we will need it after two months. The most common example in the United States of layoffs is auto workers. They work for 10 months, and when they have to change machine for a new model to begin manufacturing, they have to change machine, equipment, computers, programs. They don't need the workers. They say, we have a layoff, two-month layoff. This means you go home, there is no work. After two months, your work is waiting for you, okay? And that's called a layoff. It may last a few days or extend to a few years. The most common layoff is a few months. So, what they should practice here with the massage parlor where I was mentioning the previous lecture, they have 12 girls, but they need only three. What they should do is simply lay off six of them and say, hey, for six of you, there is no job until next season in September, right? Well, when does next season begin, tourist season? October? November? November. October? November. November. So, they say, look, August, September, October, no work. Three months, go home, come back after three months, okay? Give us your phone number. Call us if you're coming or not coming, all right? So that will be a layoff, all right? Number three is called attrition. In attrition, you reduce the number of people by not filling any openings. So you don't hire new people, and some people leave. People leave because, why would people leave a job? Number one, they don't like it and they're not happy. That's a very simple reason they leave the job. Number two, they leave the job because they find another job. Number three, they leave the job because maybe they're a young mother and they say, oh, I don't want this job anymore, I got baby now. They can leave the job because they get retired, okay? They just get old age and say, okay, no don't work anymore. All right, so 1999, 1999 was a technology boom. I was just graduating. When I was just graduating, I was looking to find a job. I could get a teaching job or a business corporate job. And American Express in Phoenix, Arizona interviewed me. They had this called job fair. And in a job fair before my graduation in August, I go, they say, oh, we like you, you should come on campus, we will interview you, and maybe we hire you, okay? So I went in, uh, I graduated in December, I went in October, got the interview, they said, okay, everything good, everything great, we will likely hire you. And after two weeks, they came back and said, uh, we approved you for hiring, but we got a hiring freeze. Hiring freeze. Hiring freeze means that the company at this point does not hire any new people. They just don't hire new people. And they had a policy of attrition. They say we have too many people at the moment, we are not hiring new people, and if somebody leaves, we reduce the number of people, okay? So, I call them in October, they say, sorry, hiring freeze. I call them in November, they say, sorry, hiring freeze. We like to hire you, we want to hire you, but right now the company not hiring too many people. All right? December come, I graduated, I think December 5 or 6, 1999. I called them, say, hey guys, I got my diploma, I can come over. They say, sorry, hiring freeze, okay? We can't hire. And this went on for many months. 
So finally, in March, three months later, I find another good corporate job. And I just send them an email and say, hey guys, it was a big pleasure to be in contact with you. Uh, for the last six months, unfortunately, you have been in a hiring freeze. I found a new job. I'm working now at Sterling Commerce, which is a subsidiary of SBC Communications. And I don't, I'm not going to be looking for your job. Please, no, you don't need me anymore. So let's go to attrition, and part of attrition is hiring freeze. Next one is transfer. And in a transfer, you move someone laterally. Laterally means on the same level in a different department, okay? That will be a lateral move, or you move them downward. Let's explain how this works. Example. Three, four years ago, in 2008, we have a banking, financial crisis in Europe. And in 2008, especially 2009, we got what's called a banking crisis. And in a banking crisis, bankers needed to downsize. And they come to a manager and say, look, you're making a big salary of $3,000. And we've got two options for you. We will lower your position and we will lower your salary to $2,000. Or if you like, you can leave. And the employee says, I'll stay with lower salary. Okay? So, you lower, let me see, to transfer. You move the employee downward. Does not reduce cost. Well, sometimes actually it can reduce cost. You just lower the salary too. And say, sorry, you're no longer manager. We don't need three managers. We need two managers now, and you're not a manager. If you like to remain ordinary employee, you can stay. Okay? So you lower the level of position. Okay? That's very common. That's a transfer. Okay? You also have reduction. Having employees work fewer hours per week. So, a reduction here in Patong with the massage parlor will, will be the following. Instead of working 12 hours, you work 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock shift, and you work from 6 p.m. till 12 o'clock. Okay? So, you work in the afternoon, you work in the evening. Tomorrow, you work in the evening and you work in the afternoon, okay? So, you have 12 employees, okay? But instead of all 12 coming for 12 hours, six come in the afternoon and six come in the evening. That will be reduced, and in this case, reduce your work hours. Also, I don't understand because I'm European and I don't understand the local culture, if they have 12, but they need only five or six, why don't they give them more days off? Why don't they say, you work four days a week, four days a week, four days a week, four days a week. Instead, they make them work six days. So they go, they sit, they don't work, they don't do anything, okay? but they just sit there for 12 hours for nothing, okay? They can just say, look, instead of six days a week, you work three days a week, okay? So you work Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, okay? You reduce the number of days, so instead of working six days a week, they work three, okay? And that's what they do in other parts of the world. I don't understand why they don't do this. Is this common here? You work only three days or four days and they lower your salary? No, not common here, right? They just sit and do nothing, right? right? They just sit and do nothing, right? I guess. So, that's a very common. So, if you're a manager, they can use this strategy and say, okay, you work six hours and six hours shift. Or you work three days, you work three days. And if you don't like the job, you can leave. It's okay, right? You can leave. No big deal. 
reduced work. Oh, wait, great time. Very common in big businesses, very common in major corporations. Someone is 61 years old and got to retire at 65. They come and say, would you like to get an early retirement? You can get retirement now. We're going to give you a little bit less money. But you don't have to work forever again. You don't have to wake up. You don't have to shave in the morning. You don't have to do anything. You can go on the beach and enjoy life, right? And get a drink during the day instead of going to work. So many people, real world says that between 30 and 70 people of employees, if you offer them early retirement, early retirement could be they're 63 years old and they got to retire at 65. Or for women in Bulgaria, when they retire at the age of 60, they may be 58 or 59. They say, hey, do you want a little early retirement? And sometimes they say, yeah, okay, I'll take early uh, retirement. Yeah, my mother did. She is a nurse. She worked for the hospital 30 years. She turned 59, whatever happened, and she just take one year early. And they say, okay. She, and she says, okay, I'm happy. Done with work. So that's early. And the last one is called job sharing. And that's having employees, typically two part-timers, share one full-time position. That's also common. So you work half-time, you work half-time, and they take full-time, OK? Uh, example will be, let's say, cash register at Big C, OK? where they have to work for 10 hours every day, right? That's a 10 hour shift. And they say, well, instead of working one, you know, you work 10 hours, they say, we'd like to split the job. And I take five hours, and the other person take five hours. And we distribute the work between ourselves, and the floor says, okay, no problem, okay? Now, similar is the job sharing which i told you about the massage parlor they got too many girls that say look one of you may go or you may share the job you work in the afternoon you work in the evening okay so these are all different ways to do downsizing let's see what else we have so we finish for today yeah that's not really good uh, it's just basic theory about selection and all this kind of stuff. I don't want to do this. Uh, it's called the step number three is the selection process. And it's very important that you don't pick the wrong person, okay? Especially if the position is long term. Now, if it's a waitress, is it a big problem if you pick the wrong waitress? No, you just say, hey, we don't like you, you're finished. Remember, we're saying you're fired, and that's it. But if it's a professor, it's a little bit difficult to fire the professor in the middle of the semester, okay? We already begin, we have classes, we have exams, we have grades, okay? You have to wait until the end. Let's see what we have. Reliability and validity. Okay, we continue next time. It's going to be next week, all right? Thank you. Camera.